And I think it's becoming clear the more that Tesla executes that Tesla's approach probably is going to outcompete Waymo's in the long term, even to the government in China. So James Dalma has a very long uh, article. We won't necessarily cover all of it, but he's made some incredible points. So let's cover that. You've got, he called it uh, full self-driving as a service. So it's in that, that alone is interesting. He didn't call it robo-taxi, but he does refer to robo-taxi. Tesla robo-taxi is going to demonstrate software growth rates in its early years. On top of that, it'll grow to significant market share and keep that market share for a long time. Now he's going to explain to you how he came up with that conclusion. He starts explaining about what happened to Skype. So Skype in 2003, they launched an internet protocol voice service. Within a year, it had a million users. A year later, it had 50 million. It was the fastest growing new technology in history. Now, the reason why he says it worked was because it substituted directly for an existing wild use service. Everybody was already doing long distance phone calls. So it's not like you're trying to train people to do something new. It's just that they needed to do long distance phone calls. Now it's a much lower price point using already available infrastructure. Everybody already had personal computers and internet. So these points are very important. If you have that criteria of something that's widely used already and you it's already existing infrastructure, then it'll go fast. It didn't need to generate demand because demand for phone calls was already widespread. It didn't need to distribute new equipment or build new infrastructure. It was a direct substitution of an expensive service that hundreds of millions of people use frequently. All it needed was a software download and a cheap sound card. So though the growth was novel at the time, similar explosive growth have occurred since then, right? So we saw the same thing happen uh, with Google Docs, Slack, Zoom, Spotify, Airbnb, Uber, Netflix. They all had high growth in their early years. And so for all of them, durable, even in volatile and competitive areas. So what he says now is we're going to see Tesla do to something similar with RoboTaxi. Why? Because everybody already has smartphones in every pocket. Millions of FSC capable Tesla vehicles are already on the road. The road and structure, every, infrastructure everywhere that people want to go, that's all that Tesla needs. Just whatever you're using now, they don't require cities to redesign something. Robotaxi directly substitutes already for Uber and for taxis. That's already used by billions of people and does it at radically lower cost and generally general conventions. Thoughts on that first point that he made? Yeah, I, I love the way that he's broken down the exact fundamental principles that allow these massive technology adoptions that are very, very quick and very, very transformative to occur. And just for people to let that sink in, that it's a service that uses infrastructure that already exists and does not need to be added to, to provide a service that everyone already uses at a price that is less than they pay currently. Those three ingredients if if it can do those things and at the uh on top of that it is quickly scalable that is the formula that allows us to see these hockey stick adoption curves that we've seen you know over and over again since this time uh the most recent one being the fastest growing you know adoption uh product in history which was chat gpt Mm. And so this is, you know, a well understood set of dynamics now that we've seen kind of over and over again, um, but we haven't seen it happen to a, a physical real world application like this in a few years. It's, you know, really since Uber and Airbnb um, that we've had one of these types of dynamics play out. Let's continue on listening to what he says here. So, and he's now talking about the moat, right? So Skype actually did not have a moat, but Tesla does. So Skype had first mover ad advantage. That was enough to get them a huge valuation when they were acquired by eBay in 2005, but they had no durable advantages over the many competitors that quickly emerged. There were no technical obstacles preventing incumbent services from dropping prices. Long distance was a very high margin business time. They just kept it because of monopolies, but they could easily cut the price. By contrast, Tesla has a durable advantage in the robo-taxi space. So it is the only entity with an existing fleet of millions of robotaxi capable vehicles already deployed, uniquely positioned to rapidly ramp up the manufacturing base for a new generation of low cost self-driving. They're going to be the fastest to build cars. No other large volume manufacturer makes electric software driven internet connected vehicles with all around cameras, <laughs> redundant computer control, critical control and sensing systems and powerful compute. 
Nobody else has a, has a data center infrastructure, the domain expertise, the custom hardware design and manufacturing capabilities, and the massive software development resources. Nobody else is vertically, uh, where are we now here? vertically integrated and self-sufficient in their ability to bring together all the elements to make widespread robo-taxi service a near-term reality. And there are no credible candidates for another company that might gain those in the near future. Tesla's unique. I love that he explained finally all the little details, the big details. Uh, incumbents cannot just lower the price, just like you know, long-distance company could have, because their transportation is a, is, or is a low-margin business. And to compete, Others will need to find, field their own low-cost robotaxi, right? Because the only way to Uber to do this is they have to find, not pay their drivers. How can they not do that? To do that, they'll need to master high-volume EV manufacturing, develop the software infrastructure for mature internet-connected fleets, develop the, both the hardware and software for full self-driving. This is going to take quite a bit of time. And uh, for so a few people abandoned their phones when they started using Skype. But in 20 years later, phones and phone service still exist. But phone service was forced to adapt, and under the hood, internet protocol dominates telecommunications today. So, it, you know, it changed the way phone calls are made. In the same way, robotaxi will not eliminate conventional vehicle use overnight. Many people will switch to it, but many more will use it alongside incumbent services. Probably most personal transportation will gradually give way to self-driving cars. But beyond this, self-driving vehicles will, like the internet protocol technology, be the foundation for an ecosystem. Thoughts on that, Hans? Yeah, I think that the points that he made about the actual full vertical integration of Tesla is one that people just continue to struggle with. You know, we were talking in a previous conversation about Tony Sakanagi's view on the robo taxi market and that Tesla's not going to be the only one who's in that market. And while that's true, they're not gonna be the only ones, they are the only ones whose vehicle cost is going to be below $30,000. And so if you're looking at Waymo and Cruise as credible competitors to Tesla, but Waymo and Cruise cost 100,000 to $200,000 mm -hmm. to put one on the road. And they're not made at the manufacturer with all of the correct sensors to operate, and they require way more compute power to operate than a Tesla. Then all of the, the fundamental elements of what make that vehicle a robo taxi are less efficient and less effective than the Tesla version. And so how can you expect that to be a credible competitor in the long run to a car that costs less than $30,000 to manufacture and comes directly out of the factory with everything necessary to operate as a robo taxi. Like the only way that you believe that that's not going to outcompete Waymo and Cruise is that you assume that it cannot do what Waymo and Cruise can do and that you actually do need LiDAR and all those things in order to solve this. And I, I just don't believe that that's the, that is the correct bet uh, given where artificial intelligence technology is these days. Um, so I, I think that's what underpins why Tesla is in you know, a very strong leadership position with respect to being able to capture this market over the long term, like um, you know, some of the geographic monopolies have in the past that have been majorly adopted, like Uber and like Airbnb. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, if you build on top of that and you just say, hey, this is, you know, like Uber and Airbnb that were real world services, when they initially launched, it was obvious that these were transformative companies and opportunities and uh, business dynamics. But it did take a while in order for there to be Airbnbs that were available pretty much anywhere that you wanted to go in the major markets. And, you know, it started in um western countries primarily the united states and then kind of uh expanded beyond that as well but now they operate in hundreds of countries like you can find airbnb almost anywhere that you want to go and that took quite some time and the same will also be true for for full self-driving but just because it's going to take quite some time doesn't mean that anyone else is in a position mm -hmm. to eat into tesla's leadership position during that long period of time um and I think that's the that's the overall point that James is making here. 
I love it. Yeah. We're going to go deeper into his actual uh, financial or uh, the numbers he's, the metrics he's using to the cost of uh, operating per mile versus Tesla versus Waymo versus others. So the the thing for others to com compete now is, do you believe LiDAR will be a solution uh, versus just vision only cameras? And then do you believe that you need to have neural nets versus just code? And now we're seeing, despite all the controversy, everybody says, no, you, LiDAR companies are gonna compete. Waymo will compete. Well, you're starting to see lots of companies saying, no, they realized Tesla was correct. Here's one of the first examples, of course, Xiaomi, Xiaopeng, a Chinese EV maker, Xiaopeng says their new model due out in Q4 will ditch the LiDAR and move to Tesla's pure vision solution. It's pretty well over. You and I have covered this so much uh, or so many times already with all these LiDAR companies failing. And yet there's some believing that LiDAR will still somehow succeed as a technology. The plan to ditch LiDAR in an upcoming new model is a major shift for Xiaopeng. Elon replied to that tweet and he just put three dots. I think he's saying, you know, hey, I told them. And this Doomed. is what happened. Doomed. Uh, and he said this five years ago. Anyone relying on LiDAR's boom? He said this five years ago. Let's listen in. To be honest, what, what we're going to explain to you today is that LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> doomed. Expensive, expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. You'll see. You'll see. Isn't it great? Ridiculous. He says this five years ago, and what did we hear? We had a barrage of all these people saying, are you kidding? You're wrong. You are the crazy one just going to, you know, there's no way, just cameras alone. And he just said, well, it's first principles. If humans have eyes, that's all we need. Yep. Uh, but no, why would you do that? LIDAR is radar. It collects all this information that humans can't see. And then the explosion of LIDAR companies and the investments, they're right. Is Tesla's wrong. Well, this is not the first one, by the way. This is not the first one. We have many, many LIDAR companies go out of business. Many founders of LIDAR companies now say vision only. So uh, doomed, you'll see. What do you think? If you've been listening to Elon and you understand his line of thinking, it's pretty hard to argue if you've got a sensor that was starting out as you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's cheaper now, but not that much cheaper versus what, a $10 camera that comes inside of an iPhone like for that sensor plus a neural net and you're already like you're already running neural nets so a, a few ten dollar cameras plus a neural net that you're already running can provide you with the exact same functionality about localizing yourself in an environment that a hundred thousand dollar originally sensor that's coming down to oh maybe now it's only a thousand dollars well a thousand dollars is still a heck of a lot more expensive than less than $100. And, and that's the core that this drives down to is, you know, do you believe that a camera plus some neural nets can do the job that LiDAR is doing? And not only can it do that job, it can do a whole bunch more jobs because guess what you're never doing with a LiDAR? You are never reading a stop sign. Doesn't matter how cheap right. that LiDAR Can't gets. Read. It's never yeah. going to do that. And so you already need the camera and the neural nets anyways. So if the camera and the neural nets are things that you already need, you can't do without them. They're already way cheaper than your LiDAR. And all you've got to do is figure out how to make the neural net on the back end of that camera smart enough to do the job of the LiDAR, which it absolutely can do. Then what is the point of the LiDAR? That has been the argument since day one. Um, this is an argument that people still fail to understand and they are doomed yeah. and it's been They're ridiculous. Doomed. Uh, but I, I, yeah, that people are still fail to understand it. That's absolutely a true statement. But at the same time, it's already proven. Elon and Tesla has, has basically proven you don't need it. And so what do we have here? We have um, Xiaopeng just published this. They said our CEO did an in-depth test, in test drive with Tesla's FSD in the U.S. How did FSD perform? How is our uh, Xiaopeng's um, program and FSE similar and how do they match up? So they did a video and I'm just going to quickly play a little bit of that um, so you can see it. 
样的。哦哦，他在干什么？我怀疑说不定 FSD 是有的智慧了 ，Maybe 想请我们喝一杯咖啡了。他的 A 十二上还有很多的内容没有画出来。我觉得这个弯可以给他九十九分啊，他现在看不出来，那是一只鸟啊。小鹏汽车 XNGP 在国内在红绿灯方面做的会更好一些。最终无人驾驶会打败百分之九十九点九九九的司机。也期待特斯拉来中国跟小鹏扳扳手腕。<laughs> okay, that's official video from Xiao Peng and the CEO, and you can see all these statements. Just very, very bullish. Okay, full self driving is getting ninety nine point nine 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 percent better than human drivers, and then the tease that they have is who's better in China. And his answer, of course, just to save a little bit of face, is that our program is much more designed for China's roads. Tesla's not yet, but he praises Tesla significantly. So. This is the debate you and I are having. A lot of people are having it as well. Is youth? I think that Xiaopeng is setting themselves to partner with Tesla. That's why their next generation vehicle Q4 is going to have the vision only. You're thinking, and we'll get there. Just I want to share a little bit more information. You're thinking that the Chinese government has a strategy of what they're doing. I, I love your thoughts there. So just to you know add a little color here, Xiaopeng started the development of their next generation LiDAR-less ADAS last year. They'd already made this decision last year to not do lidar, and that today's news saying that they're they're going to have a vehicle coming up in Q4 without lidar. That's not a surprise anymore because they already did that. And then also regarding vision only, and then also using end-to-end -end neural networks versus code. A lot of a few Chinese players had already abandoned this, and we've been reporting on this already.、Uh, a lot of the Chinese have made this move, and unfortunately, Waymo, Cruise, the Americans. They they have not done this move. The Chinese knew it. They started this. So you're talking about、uh, Li Auto, Huawei. They're experimenting with their own vision only end to end approach as well. I expect all tier one,、um, basically new electric vehicle that includes、um, hybrids, to ditch lighter sooner or later. This is Ray. He's a well respected、uh, Tesla community member. So you said this in case you don't understand. The CCP, the Chinese government, wants to make sure that they have a homegrown, fast follower to Tesla, in case following Waymo doesn't work out so well for the other ninety、um, percent of their bets. In other words, Xi Jinping doesn't want to go all in on a bet against Elon Musk. So you're saying maybe the government is kind of promoting these guys to copy them fast because in case Waymo doesn't work out. And just yesterday, I reported on this. This is Tom Ju. Tesla's vice president, he was、um, have a meeting with the government. This is the premier of China, and he spent a lot of time telling them about full self driving.、Um, so China is embracing Tesla. What's your thoughts on what might be happening here? So, autonomous just being a leader in transport in the future is a huge strategic objective for the CCP that they want to be leaders in both. Electric vehicles, but also autonomous vehicles. So they want electric autonomous vehicles to be a category that China as a whole dominates over the West. And、um, if it were not for Tesla, they probably would, in fact, be the leaders in some of these technologies. Autonomous driving, maybe not quite yet,、um, but they're working on it. And you know, we can see just a corollary. They have recently released a model called QN that, in the LLM space, is on par with, in in most cases, viewed to be superior to the open source models that are developed in the rest of the world, including the United States. And so, you know, their ability to follow with artificial intelligence technology quickly. And、um, actually move to the top of the leaderboards in those categories is something that we are already seeing in other important areas, and I think it's an area that they have aspirations to do in autonomous driving as well.、Um, they, you know, have put a lot of investment of time and energy into these other robo taxi startups that are mimicking, for the most part, Waymo and Cruise and their.、Uh, Method for solving the problem, 